My name is Atish Tasir. I'm a writer and a columnist. In this, the second of two films, I'm traveling through India, the country I grew up in. I want to see for myself the changes taking place amid a rising tide of Hindutva, or Hindu-first politics. These ideas which place Hindus above people of other faiths stem from the very top leadership in this land of 1.3 billion people. I've started my journey in the holy city of Varanasi in northern India. This is a deeply religious country in the middle of a battle for her soul. And it is no surprise that it was this place that the Hindu nationalist leader Narendra Modi chose as his election battleground, repurposing its powerful symbolism in a new time. Behind this image of a religiously diverse nation, India faces a looming crisis. Minorities, including 200 million Muslims, fear an underlying current of violence, mob brutality, and death at the hands of Hindu hardliners. The hardliners claim injustices against Hindus from Muslim rule in centuries past justifies their drive to return India to a golden age as they see it and a nation where Hindus come first. Hindu is waking up to get back the birthplaces of his ancestors. In these films I've been asking, where do these ideas come from? Following independence in 1947, which was closely intertwined with the bloody episode of partition, some people had thought that the politics of division was finally a thing of the past. In the newly created secular state of India, all would be equal before the law. But here the word secular would come to have a particularly Indian meaning. Secular in India merely meant a, the existence of a profusion of religions, all of which were allowed and encouraged by the state to flourish. But over the past few decades, a series of events occurred that threatened the very fabric of India's secular identity. It set the then tiny BJP political party on course to become the ruling power they are today. On the 6th of December 1992, a crowd of 150,000 militant supporters of the pro-Hindu RSS descended on the Babri Mosque in the northern town of Ayodhya, the reputed birthplace of the Hindu god Ram. I was standing next to the mosque when this crowd started increasing. The gate broke down and there was a huge rush of people inside beyond the control of the local guys. Sharat Pradhan was a young journalist and a key witness to the events that were to unfold. What they started doing was breaking the barricading. There was steel barricading all around. Right. And with the fury that could be, that was visible. They walked and in, within half an hour, you saw dozens of people up the mosque. With its pro-Hindu agenda, the RSS had long been agitating to destroy the 16th century mosque built by the Mughal ruler Babur and reclaim this sacred ground for Hindus. For them, the existence of the mosque was a long-standing wound. When you saw this thing come down, what did you feel? I thought about the, the social and political impact. I said, well, they have, now this is a divide that they've created in the country. They are taking us back to 1947 when India was divided. In the riots that followed between Muslims and Hindus, some 2,000 people were killed. For Indian Muslims, these events meant much more than just the loss of a defunct building. This was an identity. It was not the mosque was not... Uh, it was not the mosque that was important. It was, it was more of their identity. So did you feel that that day a new politics had been born? Absolutely. So like a new politics of division? Oh, division began. This was a division that would change the face of Indian politics, one that pushed many among the 80% Hindu majority to support the BJP, at that time, a relatively obscure political party. It's really astonishing to hear Sharad's story because it makes it so clear how the stage was set for this political drama to play out in which a defunct mosque became the vessel of religious passions. 
This Hindu reawakening was underlined by a long-running TV adaptation of the Hindu epic, the Ramayana. For years, record numbers of Indians were gripped by the series that chronicled the life of Lord Ram and tapped into a deep sense of pride and nostalgia among Hindus. It's really amazing for me to see because I grew up on that TV serial. It's the Ramayana and it was played through India in the 80s to great passion and large audiences. And now it has a kind of edge to it because we have large audiences again, but we're in a stone quarry where stones are being prepared for a future Ram temple where the mosque had been demolished. For 28 years, lawyers fought over the rights and wrongs of building a temple to Lord Ram on the site of the Babri Mosque. In the meantime, the stones for the new temple were carved with the confidence that a decision in favor of building the long-awaited temple would surely come. And at that time, you thought it was good? When I was in the Gumma, it was good. 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 कोई सवाल है वो लोग भी कह रहे हैं कि कोई दिक्कत एक मंदिर बन जाए कोई दिक्कत थोड़े हम लोग को है कोई दिक्कत नहीं हम लोग को सर हिंदू इज वेकिंग अप हिंदू इज वेकिंग अप टू गेट बैक द बर्थ प्लेसेस ऑफ हिज एंसेस्टर्स कैन हिंदू कैन गो एंड मेक ह्यूज टेंपल्स इन जेरूसलम नो can i go rome and build ram temple or hindu temple there no can i go to makka and build shankar temple there no i will not be allowed why we are considered different when the case of ayodhya comes it is the birthplace of our ram What we're seeing is the construction of partitions in hearts and minds of millions of people across the country. I think we are hurtling in a direction which is potentially catastrophic. Central to the idea of India that the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi represented was that India would be a country where it would not matter which god you worship or if you worship no god, what caste, what language. You would be in every way an equal citizen. That was like the the, the central cornerstone uh, of of what India stood for. M many of us believe that the, the issue was resolved forever, but it was not. The BJP have succeeded in uniting uh, all communities into believing that there's a common enemy, which is the Muslim. Modi also has the backing of the largest. civil society organization in the world uh, which is which is the rss which is deeply committed to the ideology of hindu supremacists the campaign to get back the site of the babri mosque for the hindus had been running for years but the act that made it possible came from a completely unexpected event one that played into a negative narrative about muslims and secularism promoted by the rss In 1986, an otherwise obscure family dispute involving a Muslim couple that became known as the Shahbano case reached the Supreme Court in Delhi. The husband claimed he divorced his wife Islamically by saying the word talaq on three occasions. Arif Muhammad Khan was a cabinet minister at the time. Talaq, just repeat it thrice and it's all over. and now he goes to the court i have already divorced her you had not divorced her on the day you had deserted her under india secular law the court refused to recognize the triple talaq islamic divorce he was ordered to pay his wife maintenance congress party pm and member of the nehru gandhi dynasty rajiv gandhi initially supported the judgment his first instinct was the right one which was to back the supreme court decision that granted this poor old lady alimony and uh, to encourage his cabinet minister of mohammed khan who we've spoken to to say so in parliament and to say so with some courage and vehemence the personal law board which represented muslims claimed the award was against islamic law 
angry clerics demonstrated outside parliament. The stand of the personal law board was that this judgment is against Islam. This is interference in the Islamic law, therefore it must change. Rajiv Gandhi buckled under the protests of conservative clerics. He went back on his decision and passed a bill that reversed the Supreme Court ruling. The case would now be judged under Muslim personal law, entitling the wife to just three months maintenance. Seeing this as an assault on women's rights, progressive Muslims and many Hindus were appalled. Gandhi came under attack from both sides. Rajiv Gandhi did the worst mistake of his life by acceding to these conservative elements and uh, overturning the Supreme Court uh, judgment and taking away her right to maintenance. Indian politics took a turn from that point. The reason was that the language which was spoken, threatening language outside parliament in the meeting of the personal law board, open call was given to break, break the legs of all those MPs who differed with personal law board. And a phrase which was used again and again repeatedly, hum pure Supreme Court ki each se each baja denge. We'll smash the Supreme Court smash with pieces. Yeah. Yes. There was a discourse about appeasement of Muslims. The idea that people have done too much for Muslims. Many Hindus were angered at what they saw as the state caving into Muslim demands. For years, the pro-Hindu RSS had agitated for access to the Babri Mosque in Ayodhya. To placate them, Rajiv Gandhi ordered the site to be open for Hindu prayer, a decision that has had deadly consequences ever since. On February 27, 2002, a train was set alight just outside Godra Station in the western state of Gujarat. 58 Hindu pilgrims were burnt to death. They'd been returning home from the Babri Mosque in Ayodhya. There was an outcry, and mobs of Hindu hardliners took to the streets. Instead of handing the dead to their families, the bodies were transported nearly 200 kilometers to the town of Ahmedabad to be paraded through the streets. लेकिन कल के जो सत्तावन लोगों का अठावन लोगों की जिस प्रकार से बारा गया है और जिस प्रकार से इस देश के अंदर मुसलमानों के द्वारा उपद्रव होते हैं उनको दंडना नहीं दिया जाता हर जगह माइनॉरिटीज के नाम पर छूट मिलती चली जा रही है ये क्या तरीका है इस देश के अंदर शासन करना है ये Parading 58 charred corpses through the streets was always likely to provoke further violence. But permission for the move reportedly came from the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, Narendra Modi himself. In the ensuing riots, over a thousand were killed, three quarters of them Muslim. In 1992, when the mosque was demolished, India changed forever. The issue of the Shah Bano was very emotive and important. The riots in, in Gujarat, brutal massacre. This sequence of events charted the path and laid the foundation for the rise of Hindu supremacist politics. And it led to the emergence of this leader, uh, Narendra Modi. For long hours, the Gujarat state authorities stood by as rioting took place, prompting allegations of state complicity. Pradeep Singh Vaghela was a young police constable. His unit was kept inactive as people were massacred. Naroda Partiya me hajar tha, ham paanch chhe police adhikari aur sab hajar the. Public 10 se 11 baje bahut hi public bad gayi. Mag koi hatta nahi tha, koi jada nahi tha. Aur hamare adhikari kya pata kisi ke raad dekh raad dekh rahe honge ke upese ko order aave. 
और उसी दरमियान में हिंदू और मुस्लिम दोनों सामने सामने आ गए थे और आमने सामने पत्थर मारा ऐसा हो रहा था जब घर पे था कि तो बाहर से बहुत आवाजें आ रही थी सब मीन्स के ना सब भागम दौड़ी कर रहे थे उस टाइम कोई को किसी को कुछ खबर नहीं थी कि क्या हो रहा है घर में यासीन माजिद वो जस्ट 10 इयर्स ओल्ड व्हेन द अटैक्स टुक प्लेस तो फिर एकदम से हमारे जो पापा की जो दोस्त थे मीन जो हिंदू दोस्त थे वो आए थे बोला कि हम तुम्हारे साथ है बोला मानदानी तुम हमारे पड़ोसी हो तो अब तुम हमारे साथ रहो तो हम लोग ने हमारी फैमिली को लेके हमारी एरिया वाले को लेके मेंबर को लेके हम लोग वहाँ से निकले तो वहाँ पे एक मंदिर थी मंदिर के नीचे हमको बुलाया गया थोड़ी देर बिठाया गया हमारे को वो टाइम पे ऐसे ही बोला गया कि भाई जय श्री राम बोलो तुम मुसलमान हो तो इसलिए तुम यहाँ रह नहीं सकते हिंदुस्तान है ये तो ये हिंदू का देश है मुसलमान का नहीं है हिंदू बनो तो तुम हमारे साथ हो बोले हम हिंदू नहीं बन सकते हम तुम मुसलमान हो तुम यहाँ नहीं बैठ सकते बोले यहाँ से तुम चले जाओ वहाँ से बिठाने के बाद फिर लोगों ने हमला चालू कर दिया और तो प्लस डीजल पेट्रोल केरोसिन सब मिक्स था उसके अंदर तो वो डालने के बाद फिर हमको जलाया गया मेरे को यहाँ हाथ पे जलाए और फिर इधर जलाए ये देखो इधर साइड जलाए फिर इधर ये चेहरे पे जलाए पैर पूरा जलाए Shaheen Qureshi was at home with her husband and three small children. लड़ाई की हवा जा रही थी भागम दौड़ी की देते भी इसको मेरे शोर घर से बाहर गए बाहर जाने के बाद तो उनको अचानक सब करके गोली सर पे लग गई उनके मैं उनको बचाने गई तो मैं बचा भी नहीं पाई नीचे वहीं गिरे ले थे वो दौड़ते हुए आगे गए पूरा दिन मैं बस वहीं छुपेली थी मैंने तीनों बच्चों को लेके वहीं पर थी और मेरा भाई एक छोटे वाला साथ में था और 22 साल पूरे भी नहीं हुए ना उसमें करके मैं विधवा हो गई For alleged complicity in allowing the mob violence and killings to go unchecked, Narendra Modi was barred from visiting the U.S., a ban that lasted for 10 years. Now, India's top court has ruled that a disputed religious site be given to Hindus for the construction of a temple. Hindu hardliners destroyed a 16th-century mosque there in 1992, sparking riots that killed at least 2,000 people. I find myself wondering how far do these events I've learned about on this journey represent an attempt at a historical reckoning? Are we witnessing a weakening of the secular character of modern India, that set of rules on which the newly founded country was established? Can we really reinvent India without taking the past into account? Tragedy of modern India is how much we've tried to sanitize history. I don't think the people, the Muslims of today, should be blamed for what happened if Aurangzeb demolished a particular shrine. But they happened. Right. To say that it didn't happen gets people's backs up. It's that over secularization. It's that reaction to this over secularization, or by pretending that it was all a happy family all along. It wasn't. It was a very troubled history. If the Muslim were to accept that yes, we are Muslims and we shall remain Muslim, but our ancestors are the same as yours, I would say 99% of the problems with the Muslims will be over. Because otherwise, your portrait as a, as the descendants of the murderers and looters and butchers and rapists, you see, how can they? They're, they're making common cause with people who broke the Ram Temple, the Krishna Temple. The Kashi Vishwanath Temple, forty thousand other temples, but it's true that they are converted Muslims. I think where Modi was important was he epitomized a Hindu backlash, you might call it, and the need for a strong leader, combined with the need to assert what they thought 
was the Hindu identity and by implication the national identity. People are coming back throughout the world. The people are thinking to come back to their roots. They are feeling the uh, pride, reconnect them with, uh, with their roots and their roots does not lie in Christianity or Islam. Identity is connected with our roots. Whether I have converted to Islam, my true identity was before Islam, we are not proud of identifying ourselves with Babur. They were the invaders. The Hindutva view of the past might sound great if you happen to be a Hindu, but where does this leave non-Hindus? Nazir Rum became acutely aware of the challenges facing her Muslim daughter growing up in increasingly pro-Hindu surroundings. She's written a book about it. Saad says, I kept waiting for my teacher to react and scold the classmate. I was silent. I didn't respond and I just kept sitting there. I didn't really know what to do. What is it like now to grow up as a Muslim child in India? Take you to one story in your book, the boy is called Hassan, and they, they come and call him to go to this birthday party. And then a few minutes later, he comes back home. The, the boy refused to let him enter in his house and said that we cannot share the cake with you. You cannot eat together or my parents don't want you at my house. And the mother said, I... What was your experience growing up in India? What, when you look at yourself in context to these stories, what was it like for you? I grew up in a different India. I think it was also because of the larger narrative. I doubt if we can even say it's the same country anymore. You know, we had that one national television channel, Doordarshan, which would have this little uh, girl who would sing Ek Anek Churiya, how there are so many different kinds of birds, but, and we are all those different kinds of birds, but we are all birds of a flock together. You know, the beauty of being told that you are one, or, you know, uh, uh, people of different identities coming right. together to sing that one song together in different languages also, but they are singing that one song together. Even that we are one, bottom line. What are the things you can do to protect her from this environment? I talk to her about India, the map, then show her who our neighbors are. You know, you have China here, you have Bhutan here, you have Nepal here, you have uh, Bangladesh here, you have Pakistan, you have Sri Lanka. So I tell her all the neighbors and then I say, what if somebody calls you Chinese? You'll laugh and say, right, I'm an Indian, I'm not a Chinese. What if somebody calls you a Bangladeshi? You'll laugh and say that you're not a Bangladeshi. What if somebody calls you Pakistani? You'll laugh and say you're not a Pakistani. Oh, so I kind wow. of made it a thing that it could be it... any of these. Right. So... Because of course the assumption being that, that that's a way that prejudice would play out. They'd say, you're a Pakistani or go to Pakistan. Because that is what is happening on an everyday basis. We need leaders to make sure that no child grows up with hatred, no child grows up with fear. This is not about Muslim kids. This is about every child out there because I'm sure as a parent you'll be worried if, if a child today grows up channelizing so much of hatred. The Hindu faith has many problems. It is the only major religion in the world which actually legitimized inequality in caste. Among the lower castes, Dalits, also known as untouchables, sit at the very bottom of the Hindu hierarchy. They perform the lowliest tasks, such as manually cleaning sewers 
often with no protective clothing or breathing apparatus. With a reported 11 deaths per month, this ranks among the world's most dangerous work. Keval Singh Rathor is a Dalit and a lawyer. He's taking us to meet some members of the Dalit community, some of whom he represents. और जो अंडर प्रिविलेज लोग हैं उनको स्पेशल ट्रीटमेंट देकर उनको बाकी के लोगों की श्रेणी में लाया जाए बराबर देखो मेरे घर वाला वो सफाई काम करते थे सफाई करते करते वो बीमार हो गए दो साल वो बीमार रहे काला बैन वगेलास फैमिली ऑफ क्लीनर्स हर हस्बैंड वाज पॉइजंड इन अ सुअर 4 इयर्स अगो टू ऑफ हर थ्री सन्स नाउ डू द सेम वर्क दलित्स फेस एक्सट्रीम प्रेजुडिस Every day of their lives. कोई में से पानी भी नहीं भरने देते। कोई गांव में हम जाते हैं ना तो चाय का कप, चाय का कप और पानी का ग्लास, वो सब कुछ हमारे अलग 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 रखते हैं। ऐसा जीवन है कि क्या करें हम, क्या किस किसी को बताएं? हमारी जिंदगी मजबूर से जिंदगी जीते हैं। Despite protections under the constitution, Dalits or untouchables are treated as outcasts. भारत में गरीब होना वो अच्छा है, लेकिन अछूत होना वो बहुत ही बुरा है। Many Dalits and other low caste Hindus have escaped their predicament by converting to other faiths such as Islam or Christianity. The BJP-controlled state of Uttar Pradesh has prepared an anti-conversion law under which religious conversion would require permission from a state official. Human rights groups say the law is aimed at keeping Dalits in their place. We've discovered a twist to this theme. We're on our way to a village where an RSS worker has converted a bunch of Indian Muslims back to Hinduism by a process called karvapsi, which literally means homecoming. Sri Lalman's father was a Hindu who converted to Islam. A generation on, he and several family members have converted back to Hinduism. भगवान गणेश जी जिसे हमने ये कहा कि मतलब जब से हम लोगों ने हिंदू धर्म अपना लिया है महिलाएं अब सेनहुर लगाती हैं और इस पोशाक में रहती हैं The small print in India's anti-conversion laws forbids enticements or intimidation to convert It's a certificate that Lal Muhammad is now named Sri Lal Man he's now been brought into the Hindu fold and it says without any pressure without any influence. So, Pita Ji told us something about the Purvajan. They used to do the same thing as the Sadi Vibas and Hindu Ritri Vibas. And we didn't know anything about it. And people did the same thing when they were Muslims. They were the same thing as the Hindu society. We used to eat the same thing as the Hindu society. We used to eat the same thing as the Hindu society. We used to eat the same thing as the Hindu society. मुंह बंद करके इधर से जाते थे रास्ते से अगर कोई जाता था तो आपको इसकी वजह से शायद से आपको दुख लग रहा था नहीं दो खंतर आत्मा तो बिल्कुल मतलब इस्लाम धर्म बिल्कुल मानने के लिए राजी नहीं था लेकिन मजबूर थे अपने पिताजी के वजह से लेकिन आपको ये नहीं लगता है कि समाज की वजह से आप आप में फर्क आया भाव डाला गया था नहीं वो तो मतलब करते ही थे लेकिन हिंदुओं के बीच में रहते थे उनके साथ रहना उनका मतलब उनके अनुसार सब काम करना त्योहार वहार मनाना कुछ ज़्यादा ही अच्छा लगता था हमें अच्छा जब आप इस्लाम के अनुसार ऊपर बढ़ रहे थे तो आपको इस्लाम में क्या अच्छाइयाँ दिखाई दे रही थी उसमें श्रीमान जी हमें मतलब अच्छाई नाम की बहुत कुछ नहीं दिखाई पड़ रहा था हमारी अंतरात्मा आपसे बता रहे हैं बचपन से ही यहाँ जाएंगे नमाज वमाज पढ़ना होता तो सिखाते भी हैं तो हम तो बिल्कुल पसंद ही नहीं करते थे वैसे ही हमारे पिताजी जाते थे लेकिन हम जल्दी नहीं जाते थे वही हम लोग जब मतलब ये हमारे पिताजी से हमने विचार किया वो बताने लगे कि ऐसे नहीं ऐसे ऐसे थे बेटा हो सकता है अपना खून है उसी की वजह से तुम्हारी अंतरात्मा ऐसे मतलब धिकार रही है सब करने के लिए दिवाली भी मना रहे थे बकराईद भी मना रहे थे तो आपने सिर्फ वो जो मुस्लिम का वो था वो सारा कुछ बंद कर दिया सब कुछ बंद कर दिया आपने मांस खाना बंद कर दिया जी जो भी ये भूल गए। I confronted Kailash Chandra, the local RSS leader who performed Lal's conversion ceremony. आप यहाँ कहते हैं कि भेद और दबाव नहीं होना चाहिए। तो ये कह रहे थे कि उनके मुसलमान होने से 
उन्हें बहुत नफरत महसूस होती थी इस गांव में देखिए ये सामाजिक दबाव महसूस करके ही हिंदू बनना चाहते रहे होंगे ना तभी तभी इन्होंने हम हमसे मुलाकात की इन्हों अपलिकेशन दिया हिंदू बनने का और लोग कहें आप मुसलमान हो आप गंदे हो आप गाय खाते हो आप ये करते हो तो वो दबाव है ना नफरत मतलब इसलिए पढ़ो क्या उस शब्द को नहीं जानती है इनको उससे वो घृणा हुई नफरत घृणा हुई उस जो गोश्त खाया जाता है गाय काटी जाती है किसी हत्या की जाती है इससे नफरत हुई इनको अब ये उस घृणा को अपनी घृणा को किसी पर थोपे या कुछ कहें तो इनकी गलती है ये कह रहे थे कि जरूर इनकी अंतरात्मा के बारे में बात कर रहे थे नहीं नहीं महसूस नहीं देखिए ऐसा है आदमी कोई चीज आदमी स्वयं महसूस करता है किसी की महसूस कराने से महसूस नहीं आप कैसे कह सकते हैं मुसलमान हो चुके थे इन धर्म स्वीकार कर लिया था इनके पूर्वजों ने इनके नाम मुस्लिम हो गए थे ये मुस्लिम धर्म ये मुस्लिम अपना सब करते थे मुस्लिम धर्म के अनुसार कार्य करते थे इनकी मन में ये पीड़ा हुई कि हमारे बाप दादा ऐसे थे हम हिंदू होना चाहते हैं अगर आपके बाप दादा हिंदू थे हिंदू होना चाहते हो तो आप हिंदू आओ आपको बना दिया जाएगा घर वापसी करा दी जाएगी ये बात अक्सरियत जो इंडिया के मुसलमान थे वो सब पहले हिंदू थे ये सत्य है कि वास्तव में हिंदू थे तो अगर कोई आए और कहे कि मेरा धर्म आपके धर्म से बेहतर है आपको इस धर्म में आना चाहिए आपको यहाँ एक गलत करना है <laughs> अपने धर्म का प्रचार किसी को अपने धर्म से जोड़ने के लिए हो वो गलत है ये जो धर्म की बात है ये एक निजी चीज होनी चाहिए या एक सामाजिक चीज होनी चाहिए धर्म तो निजी चीज है Well, that was such a heated discussion, and one of the things that made it so tense was that um, the RSS man was really worried about coercion, and especially in relation to the evangelical faiths. And um, yet, when we spoke to the guy who he had converted to Hinduism, one could not help but feel that there had been a considerable amount of social pressure on him, and that that had been a kind of coercion. Whatever the truth behind Sri Lal Man's ghar vapsi or homecoming to the Hindu fold, it's from within the lower castes that most conversions out of Hinduism in recent years have taken place. But along with Islam, it's another ancient religious group that faces the consequences of rising Hindutva politics. There are 28 million Christians in India, a 2,000-year-old community stretching back to the earliest days of the faith, but still seen by the most hardline Hindus as an outsider religion that took Hindus away from their original faith. In 2008, in the state of Orissa in eastern India, several thousand Christians came under attack. 400 villagers overnight were purged of all Christians. 60,000 Christians fled to the forest to save themselves. 6,000 plus houses, more than 320 churches were razed to the ground. Schools, colleges, hospitals, clinics, everything burned. 120 people killed, nuns raped. The case is still going on 10 years later. and we expect a fair justice depending on facts not depending on who is the majority the radicalization of the structures of state the police the administration the junior magistracy the teachers the village self government mechanism all of them actually believe this is a land of the hindus and everybody else if they want to live here must live here as second rate citizens nobody can feel safe unless there is an assurance that the muslim is safe the isolation of minorities risks becoming institutionalized in schools with so called saffronization the favoring of hinduism over other traditions in school textbooks Where the state in Gujarat where 10th grade students have been studying a new Hindu focused curriculum it writes out much of their country's non Hindu past ha pehle hum ye sab nahi jante jab humne social science padha humne teachers ne humko sab padhaya ki pehle zamane mein aisa sab sab hota tha udan khadola aaya fir bhi aeroplane aayi pehla prachin bharat bahut acha tha bharat aise to bahut bada desh hai 
पर सब अपनी पहले की चीज़ें होगी तो अपने भविष्य में वो सब काम आने वाली है वो पहले के अभी पहले के सब चीज़ अभी फिर से होने लगी है लेकिन भारत देश तो पहले से हर चीज़ों का आविष्कार कर चुका है भारत ने सुनने की खोज की है जब यहाँ पे एरोप्लेन ये सब की सुविधाएं जब अभी मतलब हुआ है लेकिन इससे पहले ही भारत का उड़न खटोला उड़ चुका था राम सीता राम के समय में या बड़े बड़े जो हमारे युग पुरुष हैं उनके समय में ये सब चीज़ें हो जाया करती थी लेकिन चूँकि वैज्ञानिक सिस्टम्स उस समय इतना एक्टिव नहीं था इतना सपोर्टिव नहीं था तो उस चीज़ का पता चला नहीं है लेकिन धीरे धीरे उन सभी चीज़ों का हमें पता चल रहा है तो हमें पता चला कि जो चीज़ें अभी विश्व में संशोधित की जा रही हैं उसका तो संशोधन भारत देश में कई सदियों पहले हो चुका है मुगल हिस्ट्री के बारे में आपने क्या पढ़ा है क्या जानते हैं आप What today's 10th graders may not get to learn about is the wealth of learning and cultural blending that accompanied Muslim rule in India, the Mughal dynasty. Aurangzeb may have been harsh and puritanical, but other Mughals brought a culture of openness and learning. The Taj Mahal is the supreme expression of this. It was built by the Mughal ruler Shah Jahan as a mausoleum for his beloved wife Mumtaz Mahal. He preached equality among Hindus and Muslims and he celebrated Hindu festivals a tradition established by his grandfather Akbar under him India enjoyed a religiously and culturally diverse existence schools for both Muslims and Hindus were established policies that earned the loyalty and respect of Hindus a blending of culture and religion emerged so called syncretism and an essential part of Indian life today I'm in Fatehpur Sikri built by Akbar which he made his capital. Success came through acknowledging the multiple cultures within India. Here syncretism is enshrined in the architecture. The column, the Diwane Khas in the hall where Akbar would hold court, assimilates motifs from Hinduism, Christianity, Buddhism, Islam and Zoroastrianism. So the pillar itself kind of stands as a testament to this mixing of faiths and this is from a man who brought brahmins near him and pandits near him to learn from them he drank the water of the ganga he had a deep regard for hindu faith and custom and belief and um and i think his aim was to find in this land of many religions where he was ruling as a muslim emperor to find a way in which people could go forward it wouldn't be secularism as we know it it's not in the modern european sense but it was clearly driven by a secular ideal i'm about to see something quite extraordinary but which at the same time is peculiarly indian we're in a hindu temple that was partially destroyed and turned into a mosque by aurangzeb Look at that those tem like literally the columns What's interesting temple. here is that part of this mosque complex remains a place of worship for Hindus That's the ultimate and iconic symbol of Shiva and it's being kind of prepared for prayers in the evening and it sits in this basin and you cast your eye around you see very very typical muslim arches and then you see what are really like the pillars of a hindu temple but in the middle of that is the qibla which is the direction of prayer so both faiths are represented both forms of worship are occurring side by side and this to me is historical resolution i saw siyano ki sabse badi masjid hai us puare ko bhi hum log ke purvaj jo jeevit the us samay ko ye acha lagta hai ki dono dharm ek sath yahan ye dekhega idhar namaz hoga इधर आरती होगा दोनों एक साथ होता है यहाँ वैसे जुमा में ज्यादा लोग ना होते हैं और ईद बकरीद की जो नमाज होती है सालाना उसमें ये सब सब भर जाते हैं आई वॉन्ट टू नो दूज ऑन द मॉस्क इन अयोध्या एंड हिंदुज्म मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट टेम्पल द काशी विश्वनाथ विच औरंगजेब ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉयड टू बिल्ड अ मॉस्क जब आप ज्ञान वापी मस्जिद को देखते हैं तो फिर आपकी क्या राय है अयोध्या में राम जन्मभूमि मथुरा में कृष्ण जन्मभूमि काशी में काशी विश्वनाथ मंदिर जो विशेष आस्था का केंद्र है इन मंदिरों को छोड़ दे अपना अधिकार उसके बदले में हमसे जहाँ भी कहे हम मंदिर बनवा मस्जिद बनवाने के लिए तैयार हैं 
जाहिर सी बात है एक दफ़ा तो जो है सोचना पड़ेगा कि जो भी हुआ देश के अंदर वो अच्छा नहीं हुआ इसलिए उसके पीछे कितने लोगों की जान गई और आपको क्या लगता है जो उन्होंने मस्जिद पर बात किया वहाँ हम लोगों के लिए जो गुलामी का प्रतीक था क्योंकि बाबा राजाई था so it's very very interesting you know he's saying whatever happened there was not a good thing it was not a good thing that happened and he says for me it was a symbol of slavery because it was built by babar who was who enslaved us lekin aapke beech mein koi kadwahat nahi kadwahat nahi hai koi kadwahat nahi kyon bhi kadwahat hum log jab mein kahenge tab hum log gal mein hum log koi kadwahat kyon rahe hain kadwahat kyon hai tab bharat ke nagrik hain न कोई हिंदू है न कोई मुसलमान है सभी यहाँ के नागरिक हैं सो आई वॉज रूली स्ट्रक बाई दिलियरिटी बिटवीन दीज टू मैन बाई दफेक्शन बाई द वॉम एंड आई वॉज लेफ्ट विद स्ट्रेंज क्वेश्चन बिकॉज वन दे गॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट हिस्ट्री वन दे गॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट टेम्पल्स दिस थ्रो इट वॉट वॉज टू बी रीबिल्ड वॉट वॉज टू बी लेफ्ट दे वो रिली इ रेकनसाइलेबल डिफरेंसिस बिटवीन दैम एंड येट दैर वॉज दिस सिबिलिटी एंड दिस अफेक्शन and it left me feeling i thought well is this everything is that ability to get on really what counts or do people have to resolve their differences down to their very being if that's even possible on the eve of india's independence day i'm returning to delhi I'm starting the day at the Jamia Millia Islamia, a Muslim college where celebrations are already in full swing. Hello and welcome everyone. Would you like to tell us about the importance of Independence Day? Madam, hame garv hai apne shaheedon pe jinhone uch neech zaat paat dhard ke bandhano ko todte hue angrezon ki gulami se hame mukt karaya. Madam, hame aisa desh, aisa samaj chahiye jo Hindu, Muslim, Sikh There's no doubting the commitment of these Muslim students. I was impressed by this carefully prepared display of unity. It was on this day 72 years ago that India gained independence from Britain along with the events that led to partition. At that time it became clear that India's Muslims, those who chose to remain, would be as much part of this nation as the Hindus. When I arrived in this country, I expected to find a place dramatically different from the one I grew up in. Instead, I was pleasantly surprised to find how intact Indian life still is, how integrated, how assimilated. And yet I cannot deny that I felt a sense of foreboding among India's 170 million Muslims, a deep feeling of disenfranchisement. This is a country in the grip of a historical reckoning. The Indian past with all its pain and complexity is being relitigated. How it negotiates this passage will not merely affect India's Muslims, but the moral and spiritual health of the nation as a whole. It was time for me to return to my home in New York. I left India feeling encouraged and hopeful for the future of the country I'm so proud to have grown up in and call my own. But in New York a nasty shock awaited me a letter from India's Ministry of Home Affairs and what they're threatening to do is to revoke my overseas Indian citizenship which allows me to live and work in India the grounds that they're saying that the grounds that they're using to revoke this is that apparently I've concealed the Pakistani origin of my father and it's a very worrying letter because if it goes through I may not be able to return to India and they i meant to have 21 days to respond but i have barely 24 hours to respond to this letter i'd recently written this article critical of narendra modi he and the bjp then attacked me wrongly calling me a muslim and a pakistani with no right to interfere with indian affairs with attacks such as this on critical journalists i'm as worried for my country as i am for the impact of this on myself and my family in india 
के खिलाफ खड़े हुए हैं my lawyer feels that there's something malicious in what the government has done they're accusing me of concealing the fact that my father was pakistani which is kind of absurd because i've written books and articles for over a decade about my father's pakistani origin and about the fact that i was always estranged from him and grew up with my mother in india i can't help but feel that the reason is this time magazine article More than 250 prominent writers have petitioned the Indian government on my behalf. I was grateful and more than touched by their support. The Booker Prize winning Indian novelist Kiran Desai was one of them. I thought it would dishonor my parents not to speak up and I'm talking about the India I grew up in. I am afraid because I know all the minorities in India are very afraid. Um and when you have a country that does not honor its minorities then it's time to be very afraid the press is under threat in india we have had many cases of books being banned in india and of writers being silenced but i think the situation is growing more acute we are talking of murder of silencing writers by murdering them by banning their books silencing the press and with you of course they came up with a, a technicality every new victim becomes a symbol of this oppression there were plenty of people who would have loved to sign and were really far too scared to sign there is so much fear even among indians here that there will be severe repercussions on their speaking up and that they will be targeted <laughs> one by one ah With a heavy heart, I have to surrender my overseas Indian citizenship today. Well, I've come out one document less, and this is a kind of weird goodbye to India. It feels very hard for me because this is a country I've grown up in, I've lived in all my life, and suddenly I don't really have the right to go there anymore. And and I and I basically feel bereft of my mother my grandmother my country and 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 the place where i grew up the bjp has just passed its so called citizenship amendment bill for the first time in indian history it establishes a test of religion for becoming indian earlier on in this film i had asked myself are we witnessing a weakening of india's secular character the answer to my question seems frighteningly to be yes I'm reminded of something the veteran politician Arif Mohammad Khan said about Bharat, the Hindi name for India. Indian tradition says this whole continent between the sea and the Himalaya, this is Bharat and all those who live they are the children of Bharat. The race does not matter, the, the personal belief does not matter, the gender does not matter. the place of residence does not matter nothing matters are you a children of bharat I are you a child, child of, of bharat i am child of am bharat. i a child of you bharat? are a child of bharat and if someone was to say to me i'm not what do i say to him if someone is going to if tell me if someone was to if say if someone is going going to tell me that i'm not son of my father let him go to hell <laughs>